So let's get it started. Tonight's session, I am going to be going over trading your own plan, right? Sticking to your trading plan. So just to start off, right, each morning, I uh, I do this in the Discord, right? We have pre-market prep every morning at 8.30. See, I post these plans. We chart out tickers and select contracts, right? Uh, situational contracts. So I know for a fact with my pre-market channel strategy that one of four, right, one of four of these outcomes will occur, okay? I know for a fact. It's impossible for it not to occur unless it's just going to go and not even bouncing but not moving all day, right? You guys seen those old small cap tickers that have no volume and just move alongside time? So, right, I do this pre-market channel strategy. I set my pre-market highs, pre-market lows, previous day highs and lows, and I set uh, my demand zones, right? Demand or supply and demand zones. So going through here, you can see off of the open, right? It rejects this pre-market high supply. Okay. Rejects this pre-market high supply comes back down, right? And what does it say? Bounce off of pre previous day low right here, this demand 113, 114 calls, right? This tapped it very aggressively. Buyers came in very, very aggressively here not even letting it get down to 113 and this was the perfect tap right i mean i can go through here this was not changed Oop, this is not changed at all you can see the same chart set up here I, I this is from the 15 so you'll see where i get oh where i got this zone from right uh i charted it in the 15 this morning you see my zones okay you would also have seen on the 15 minute this did not close strongly this is actually a tweezer top perfect respect of this demand zone this was absolutely the bottom you would have been able to ride this all the way up also you know this is just a go you know this is just a proof of the matter that you know going into your day blindly right you're all you're already at a disadvantage okay you have to be able to understand that there are other participants in this market that are trading, you know, 10 times, 20 times, 1,000 times your account, and they're taking this much more seriously than some retail trader looking to make a quick buck, right? This is someone's passion. This is their bread and butter day in, day out. So I want you guys to start sticking to your plan. Um, a huge problem with traders failing to sticking with their plan is the fact that they don't have a true uh, thesis or a, a true trust in their own emotions, okay? So I also drew this this morning off of the one hour, right? Uh, same thing. This is QQQ. Pull this up. Okay. Same zone, same situational contracts, right? You have this hourly downtrend break. Okay. I knew that, hey, you know, buyers, they've been absorbing this 342 and below area for the last couple of days, right? This whole area has been bought up. So zooming in. On the one hour i knew that hey we did round off here but it could be a higher low when it does push down i feel like buyers would really be interested with this demand zone here and uh you know i was looking for this downtrend break to occur off the hourly so if we go through on the five minute i know i have a lot of drawing this is all left from earlier from the stream right perfect downtrend break okay see where my entry was Right after the downtrend break, it was kind of consolidating in supply. I'll, I'll go into more why I took that entry on the one minute. But, you know, very clean thesis for a breakout trade. The perfect break. I'm not a huge breakout buyer, right? I have to buy on a pullback or giving myself some sense of risk, especially on a smaller time frame. Um, someone said, how do you... I, I'll go over the supply and demand in just a minute. Uh, how, how do you know how to draw the lines and how can you predict them? So I do no predicting. Okay, this is all um, muscle memory. This is all from situations that I've traded previously and I know both outcomes, right? It's either going to fail or it's either going to be respected. Okay, um, so right here, very nice move right there uh, on the breakdown of this kind of downtrend break from the hourly and nice inverse head and shoulders as well. Okay. So I want to go over a few trade reviews and then we'll get over into the supply and demand. Just give me one moment. Okay. So 
Let me pull this up on the trading floor. Where is it at? Okay. So let me pull up Tesla. What time is that? 10 7. It's that candle right here. Okay. So here we go, right? Uh, one of the trade reviews, one of the call outs today, I said right here at 10.07 a.m., Tesla interested in 810 P's. This is for the scalp, right? I know for a fact that Tesla moves. Now, some of you guys are afraid to trade Tesla, and I totally understand, right? It, you know, when you pull it up, there's a huge, yes, I'll go over A plus setups. That, that's on the list. Um, I understand that there is huge uh, kind of, you know, um, it's pretty expensive for a lot of newer traders, right? But if you really look at this, right? If you look at the Delta, okay, especially like if you're trading out of the money, right? Um, you know, if you look here, 24, 24, 20s, 20s, 19s, 20s, right? So it doesn't really make sense, right? For, especially for five, for five Delta, point, point 0.05 Delta. It doesn't make sense for a trader to trade, uh, you know, a, a $2,000 contract here, right? Where, if, where, you know, the delta is only losing by two points, right? 0.22 to 0.24. It doesn't make sense to buy the contract that's twice as much, okay? Because this is going to, oh, this is the Vega, right? Here we go. I'm sorry, I messed that up. You know, it doesn't really make too much sense to pay twice as much for not that much more delta per contract. Sorry, I was looking at the Vega. I need to fix this. There we go. There's the delta. It doesn't really make too much sense. I myself have been trading a little bit further out of the money. Um, so when I was trading these earlier, right, like I said, here on the 810 P's on Tesla, this was at right at 10.07 a.m. Okay, now, if you had missed this move, this is where a lot of traders get into trouble, right? This is, you know, one of my uh, A-plus things that I do, especially when I'm trading a trend. Okay, so let me clear this out completely. When I see this, right, it's one failed VWAP, broken base on VWAP. Okay, also respecting the 9 and the 20. It has failed, right, broken through this support. A lot of traders will FOMO taking the short, which is fine. It may work out for them, but what you should be doing, regardless of, you know, maybe this is a better entry overall, right? But we take them right here at 10.07, right on this green candle, right? I call it out right as soon as we get the first green candle because I want those contracts at a discount. I want it to pull back. I want the IV to pull back a little bit. And right there, 1007, that is the first pullback after this trend, right? After we break the low of the day. That is a very aggressive move, but the absolute best entry that you could have gotten on this move down here, okay? Um, I also talk about taking a lat or here, right there, right here. Seven minutes later, it's already 140 a contract, and I believe I get all out about two 220 a contract, right? But you guys need to understand risk, okay? So I talked about risk management on being one of the topics that we'll talk about tonight. When you are taking a pullback entry, right? Now, your thesis, normally, if it's on momentum, you have much better risk to reward on the one-minute EMAs compared to, like, you know, you go to a 10-minute EMA, Right. If you if you take a if you take Tesla here and you stop out way down here, right? What is that? 867 or 868 practically, 865, right? That's a big kind of jump, really not too big, but it's really rather too late for you to take your stop loss out there if you've already taken your entry up here or full position up here on the 9. Right? So we'll go back to the one where I was. And what you guys really need to do, right? This was a very kind of, uh, you know, my plan was to either average down more into this zone or, you know, take my entry. If I get a pivot, add more or even take a ladder, right? Now, you know, you could have gotten a ladder here, right? First entry there, right? But where would you have stopped out? You probably would have stopped out above that 20 EMA, which is completely fine. As a trader, especially as a day trader, you really need to be able to get into the mindset of, 
you know, instead of looking at trades of how much money you're going to make, you know, looking at trades of how much money you could potentially lose before taking a trade, right? What is your risk level? So many times traders are just intrinsically or impulsively taking an entry without really gauging the risk. And when that loss occurs, they're sitting there shocked. They don't really know how to, you know, um, cope with that loss. And they didn't expect to take a loss. Right. As humans, we really have a hard time accepting failure, accepting defeat or just accepting being wrong. Um, let's see. I'm just catching up on the chat. Uh, price action book. It is Anna Cooling's price action book. Yeah, time, it, time definitely. Right. I trade the closest expiry always because due to the fact that you know, there are those bigger gains percent wise, but you have to be very accurate. You have to be right. You know, if you're a newer trader starting off trading zero DTEs, right, I feel like it's better for you. Um, you may go through a lot of, you know, much more, uh, you know, kind of, I don't, I don't know, painful experiences or this or that, right? But it, you're trading under harder circumstances, which in the end, forces you to be a better trader, right? Especially a lot of you who have, you know, uh, recently picked up options, right? You're trading, um, here, I don't want to, you're trading options where normally the market, you know, the last two years has only gone up, right? Now we're going down we're making lower highs and lower lows. This is still somewhat, uh, tough price action, difficult price action co compared to this small loads, you know, week by week or day by day, right? So, you know, be sentimental, be appreciative of this uh, kind of, you know, price action, especially if you're doing somewhat well or, you know, piecing it all together. So uh, let me go back to Tesla here. So I want to touch on supply and demand. This is something that I know a lot of you guys are struggling with. And, it, it, you know, from my perspective, it, it's a rather simple concept. If you really want to practice drawing supply and demand um, from an intraday perspective, maybe because you're a day trader, right? I need you guys to go through maybe on the five minute, pr preferably the 10 minute, you know, and uh, and do the, and use this method, right? Take notes if you have a, a you know tough time understanding supply and demand, right? So remember, imagine none of this has occurred, right? Can I change this color on here? change it to black okay well that's not gonna do anything okay imagine that none of this has occurred right so we can actually go here none of this has occurred all right so prior to the close one second prior to the close you have this high up here and this wick right this is the most recent supply and demand okay one second oh shit So we'll draw a box there on the bottom wick. Remember, my two rules for a supply and demand zone are this. I need to see a large bottoming wick or large upper wick prior to a large move down or prior to a large move up, right? So this is what I'm going to draw. I'll draw these zones and then I'm going to extend them out. You know, what's today's date? There you go. Past today's date. All right. Now I'll remove this. Okay. Now we'll see how this pans out over the next few days and how you could have used it to your advantage, right? You see, all you could have done was mark the bottoming wicks. You could have started off, right? You could have started off marking support there and then resistance there, okay? Then you beef it up a little bit. Draw your upper wick, extend it out a couple of days. Remember, don't cheat with your boxes. Draw your bottoming wick box. Just this wick right here, right? I'll draw the arrow where I'm drawing the zone off the wick, okay? Extend that out. Just like that, okay? So, uh, no drinking? Oh, wait, I don't know what's going on. Um, so, going through here, right? You could have uh, taken it long, How do you know, depending upon your train commons, whatever, right? But this is still regardless of the extended hours, right? It's still a strong respect of that demand, right? Demand respected in uh, pre-market, respected here once again, and again, and again, and again, right? 
comes in here today it gets pushed below a little bit right which would have washed out a lot of retail especially if you're trading options if you're trading a further expiry and just don't even think of this as tesla just look at this as a chart right just look at this as any kind of experience in the market that you may encounter okay this demand here yes it does wick below but you get tweezer bottom and tweezer bottom now a lot of times when i'm day trading i don't necessarily have to have previous day supply and demand it is very helpful in order to have that but you don't always have to so like if i go here today right you can see oh large tweezer top large upper wick right draw your box okay oh large bottom right tweezer bottom large bottoming wick right there draw your wicks just right there okay remember imagine none of this has occurred yet right this has not occurred at this point in time nothing has occurred it pops up right price pops up right here when it comes back down and rejects off these emas it is your job as a trader to, to think remember back to that you know hey how much would i lose if i took an entry here right what is my risk okay what is my risk your risk right should always be about the base of support or the high of resistance right but i never right here let me take this out never stop out on the actual support or resistance break never never ever never you will get waked out okay where do i stop out typically if i have this as the basis of my demand whoops okay now we have demand and supply if i if i have if i'm looking for a stop loss right Where's my stop loss? My stop loss is in this area below it. If I'm going short here, you know, let's say I went short right there, my stop loss is in an area above this uh, the supply, right? Always. Okay. So never, please. This is why you guys get wicked out, okay? Because you stop out or you set your stop. Oh, you know, 844.27 right on the dot has to hold. Okay. That's not what we do. Uh, yeah, a tweezer bottom or tweezer top. So, you know, right here, you see this? You guys have tweezers, right? Maybe you just got big bushy eyebrows. Hopefully not. You know, but tweezers, okay? When you pluck something, you have two bottoming wicks right here, okay? They look like tweezers, right? It is a huge, probably my A-plus setup for reversals majority of the time, right? So, you see that? Tweezer top really what you're looking for right is to see the body not being close above and seeing these upper wicks or these lower wicks right seeing that body it looks really obvious to you on the intraday this you can take and uh, a lot of information from and like uh, and make a lot of money just simply seeing these two upper wicks like that or two bottoming wicks okay what does that mean when you see this okay these right here these mean that a seller or a buyer has come in and placed an offer or a bid and is not allowing price or multiple market makers not allowing price to breach that level to breach their new position okay so like i had here the supply and demand remember this is not developed when this gets rejected right you see this this big tweezer top right there when this gets rejected from that supply Okay, where is it going to fall? Okay, a lot of traders, you know, oh, I'm just going to go long on the first green candle, right? And then you get stopped out and then it rips in front of your face, right? That's it. That, how, many, how many times has that happened to you guys? Okay, so supply and demand. When it comes down here, take an entry. If it is slow, you know, if price is slowing and you do have a tweezer bottom, you know that there's a buyer here. Whenever you see a supply and demand zone, it's just where orders are. I look at it as, you know, this is where other participants in the market or in the in the market, whether it be buyers or sellers, have the opportunity to defend their position. Okay. So you can see how that worked out here. Remember on AMD, right? AMD, look, right? This is that demand. Really, this demand was respected, right? Tweezer bottom maybe wicking out traders remember this is why we never stop out right on that level okay you never stop out right on the level why this is that area below the zone okay 
of liquidity where buyers or sellers may have more uh, orders right to absorb to take your contracts or shares from okay tweezer top i mean guys go through look at your 10 minute chart mark out all your tweezer tops right let's go to a totally different day let's go to like you know right here this is good tweezer bottom okay tweezer top right tweezer top right there let's go to another day right I don't really see one here. This is kind of a tweezer down there. Okay. Right here, tweezer top. Right here, tweezer top right off the open. Okay, you guys see? Go through. You have to be able to, uh, with repetition. All right, look at this. Tweezer bottom. You're going to see it all the time. Tweezer bottom. Right, tweezer top right there. It gets shoved down. Okay, let's move forward. Tweezer top. Look what happens after you find the tweezer top big short rejection right look at what happens here oh tweezer top right yeah this is for commons but tweezer top rejects hard once again tweezer top tweezer bottoms tweezer bottom occurs big rip up tweezer top right here occurs what happens the reaction big shove down okay tweezer top what happens when you see that big rejection big tweezer bottom what happens after big forward right big continuation to the bullish uh, perspective so you guys see that right that's why it's one of my favorite looks when trading a market uh you know it's bullish or bearish until it's not when you see that signal you need to be able to to find that follow through right normally that will scare off the other opponent so if you be or what would happen is you get a big bullish push buyers see that tweezer top they begin to sell because they know that that's a sign of reversal right sellers come in shorts they come in oh they push down they have to buy in order to cover they see a tweezer bottom they begin to buy right they begin to cover to flatten their position you get two tweezer bottoms tweezer bottom tweezer bottom right look at what happens the rest of the day right okay so i also want to go over a few trade thesis from today um we'll just leave this up right we had that downtrend break right i went long here off the open whoops where's it at uh right here 935 qqq 343 calls okay qqq 343 calls one second I'm always looking at the one after this, right? 343 calls right here. Look, look at the timestamp. Okay, call that in the Discord. Where are you at? 935, 343 calls, QQQ. Okay, right there, 935. Why did I take this? Can someone in the chat tell me why I took that trade? Right, if you guys have been following along. How many setups do I look intraday and would I recommend? Uh, I, there's a, I have a huge library of setups mentally. Okay, you guys said tweezer bottom. Okay, that's good. In demand zone tweezer. DJ, good work, right? When we are trading, we need to not only take an entry based off one confirmation. I need multiple levels of confirmation, right? I have to have multiple levels of confirmation because when I have multiple levels, it means, hey, I know that there's traders that only trade price action. They see this tweezer bottom, they're going to buy. Hey, I see there's demand traders here, right? Demand traders. Supply and demand, right? That's another perspective. Two perspectives. We take the 343 calls, right? I scale some out. Locking more profit, right? Look, 944 from 935. 10 minutes. I've already made $90 a contract. Okay? In 10 minutes. Where is my goal? When I take this entry, where am I targeting to, to uh, scale out? Right? Where have I drawn the zone from? What is this? I know it's on the one minute, but what is this? Right here, where I'm drawing all these arrows. Supply. Okay. Right? And I, I don't want to be I don't want it to be too basic, but I know that there's a lot of traders in here that just don't really know too much about supply and demand, right? Higher highs are scales, SSDs, right? That's completely right pre-market high supply 
one of my A plus setups is taking a trade from zone to zone. I know what is the confluence here, okay? I took this entry here because I knew that I'd stop out under there, right? I'm going to take my entry, seeing some buyers stepping on the wicks, right? I'll stop out if it breaks below 341.43, an area below, okay? But it two scenarios will happen. It will either stop me out or I'm going to make money. That's the only two scenarios. You can't tell me that there's another scenario because there's not. Okay, so when it pushes up to the to supply, supply is what? Can someone give me a definition on as to what supply is or you know, who controls supply? Where sellers are. Okay? It's very simple. It's very simple. How many of you guys went long on QQQ and supply? Who the hell is going to go long in supply, right? Unless there's a true break in base or true breakout, right? You take your profit. My One of my A-plus setups in my book, from zone to zone, right? Then you can take another trade from zone to zone. What do I do here? What do I do right here, right? I've taken my money from the calls. What do I do? 9.51 a.m., QQQ 343P puts stop loss above pre-market high. I've taken the same trade thesis and flipped it upside down. Okay, so we'll go back. We'll show that screen, uh, that timestamp again, right? 9.51, 343P stop loss. So 9.51. Where's 9.51? 9.51 candle right here. Right there where that white arrow is, right? I short in supply. I take a put in supply. Where's my stop loss? right here an area above it if pre-market high breaks what is the strength of taking that trade you have your you have your your stop loss this pre-market high you're in supply you know that sellers have sold here once twice three times they're probably going to sell here a fourth time you have that hourly downtrend break remember this big line i drew from the hourly that we we're talking about you have that line there's multiple levels of confluence Take the damn trade. Stop thinking about it. Stop hesitating. If you get stopped out, you get stopped out. Where's my target? I've taken already one trade from zone to zone. You take the other trade, this new put, from zone to zone. That is literally the bottom and literally the top off the open. Okay? So I want you guys to slow your roll, but also you need two or three levels of confirmation before you take a trade. I'm going to show you another level of confirmation trade that we took. What time is this? This is 10.30. Okay. Okay, right here. Perfect. So I'll clear this chart out. Right? Mid candles. You guys have used mid candles before, right? Let me go on the five minute, actually. I think I called it on the five or something like that. No, I mean, I was on the one. It's the same thing. I don't really need a, a time frame. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Right here. Okay, so you get a big spike up. You do not buy this. You do not buy this. Okay, you buy this, you are asking to lose money. You're just like, hey, market makers, I'm sticking, I'm sticking out like a sore thumb. Come take my money, right? You're screaming, come take my money. Why would you short up here? Or why would you go long here, right? This is a supply, small type body consolidation prior to a large move down. It's supply. You're pushing up. Look how far extended you are on your smallest time frame EMAs, right? You're one minute. Very far extended. So what do I say here? 10.33 a.m., scalping 3.43 calls. I will stop out below the 20 EMA in the one minute. Okay, that's at 10.33. So I'll mark the arrow where the entry is, 10.33, right there, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you, uh, there's no real reason why I traded QQQ over SPY, I just trade, uh, it's it's all preferential, right? I, I've i traded uh, the, just the Qs more, and I like uh, the tech stocks, I like trading and understanding the holdings within the Qs. So, you have how many levels of confluence here? You got your one minute 200 EMA, which is also your five minute, which pops up here, right? I can go on the five and show you. Jay Huge was talking to me about that today, right? 200 EMA right there. We'll go back to the one. Okay, so you have here, let me go. Level, hold on. 
levels of confirmation. Okay, we have the 9 EMA right here. 9 and 20 EMA. Okay, so 9 and 20 EMA. What else do we have? VWAP. This purple line. VWAP. You're very far extended. You have VWAP. Okay. This is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm thinking when I'm taking a trade. Okay. Right there. 9 and 20 EMA. You have your stop loss under the 8 and 21 is the same thing. It doesn't matter. Uh, it, you have your stop loss under this red EMA, the 20 EMA. Right. You, you're buying a pullback, so you're already buying at a discount. Right. You also... Right? Look at mid candle. You draw from the base of this to the peak of this. To the peak of this move. Remember, this has not happened. Right? This right here has not happened yet. Okay? So, you draw your mid candle using your Fibonacci retracements tool from the base of this to the peak of this move here. Okay? You also have mid candle right there. I call it what? 1033. Look at the timestamp. Right? 10.33 a.m. Scalping 3.43 calls. I have 9.20 EMA, VWAP, 200 EMA, and mid candle. Right? Four levels of confluence. Take the trade. Right? No more hesitating. Take the trade. This right here was a 35% move in, you know, how many minutes? This is the one minute. One, two, three, four, five. Five minutes. Five minutes and you take you make a third of your money. Okay. So please, when you're taking a trade, your biggest trades that you will lose on 90% of the time are the impulsive emotional trades, right? How do you fix that? You have to understand your trading edge, right? I always tell you guys, you know, constantly. And throughout your trading career, I need you to ask yourself, you know, what is your trading edge? What's your current strength uh, throughout trading, right? You have to. Mid candle is a 50% retracement, right? So, like, you know, I mark from the base, mark from the peak, 50. This is the mid candle here. Why does this work, right? Algorithms will buy on the 50% discount of the move, right? Half of the move. Where is their stop loss? beneath the 61.8 fib okay majority of the time 60 70 percent of the time okay so um levels for identifying risk right i've talked about the 20 ema on your preferred timeline right the base or the top of demand and supply right those are your risk levels we, we have also talked about pivot points stuff like that okay Trading can be very simple, but, you know, as newer traders come into the market, right, emotions overcomplicate the entire kind of, um, you know, process of their trading, okay? So, um, I also want to talk about selecting the correct ticker. Now, you may look at this on the queues, and maybe you're a spy trader, maybe you're an AMD trader, right? Whatever you trade, I know large cap traders have a, a preferential bias as to what tickers they trade. Oh, I'm a Tesla trader, I'm an Apple trader, right? Who cares? Okay, look at the cues, right? And Jay Huge pointed this out very cleanly, or very early on today, right? And I, and I hope that we can continue to do stuff, right? Like that. And I'll show you another mid candle trade. Uh, the cues from today, right? Yes, it does hold its five minute EMAs, but this is really choppy right here. Okay, look at these five minute EMAs. Right, look at these five minute EMAs. Never broken at all today. J Huge called this out. He was like, hey, MU is a pretty strong trade. You know, chip stocks are up due to Biden pumping chips, whatever last night, Intel, all of that stuff, right? Deb said she's a Microsoft trader, right? Everyone has their preferential bias. I like trading QQQ. I like trading AMD. I like trading NVIDIA. You know, whatever. But just because another ticker that you're not comfortable or you're not, you know, uh, you don't know it so much does not mean that there's not plenty of opportunity there. Okay. So this was rather choppy. The indexes are kind of choppier compared to other things. You know, that's why I like scalping them. But this is easy money. I made call outs in, in real ones today, you know, saying, hey, you know, EMA pullback on the one minute, you know, MU's just grinding up, yada, yada. But 
focus on the tickers that are much stronger or maybe a weaker name on the day. Okay, let's look at QQQ yesterday. All right, QQQ yesterday. Would you say that this is a clean EMA trend day on the five minute? I wouldn't, right? I wouldn't. But look at the date. Remember, this is today and then this is yesterday. So tell me which one you'd rather trade, right? Would you rather trade this chart or would you rather trade this chart? Both on the five minute. Okay. You have the opportunity and the ability to choose what you're going to trade, of course, right? So you have to, just like Bad Buddha has said, right? Learn the personality of these tickers. Okay, you know that, hey, if MU is kind of moving, you know, it's a chip stock, it's going to follow the Qs relatively. But if it's overall, if it's strong, if it's moving much more strongly than other, you know, tickers like, say, AMD, NVIDIA, or Tesla, then trade alongside that simple trend, right? Keep your trading as simple as possible. Uh, it's easy to call that out earlier in the day, right? Not necessarily. Right, you can look at you know look at AMD off the open, look at QQQ off the open. This is the same day, mind you, right? Same day. Okay. Now, if I'm gonna uh, gather an analysis, okay, we know that the nine and the twenty EMA is an indicator for either a bearish or bullish trend, giving you a stop loss, and as to who is in control by the control of the twenty EMA, right? Saying. If you see rejections off the 20 EMA, bears are typically shorting that or you have an algorithm shorting that. This is the same time. Five minute, five minute, look at the date, three, one, look at the date, three, one. Off the open, what are my EMAs doing here for me? They're not doing anything. They're not doing anything for me. I'm not getting any benefit from this. What's VWAP doing for me? Nothing. It's in the middle. Where is VWAP and where are my EMAs here? Right? We are beneath the 9 and the 20, and we are beneath spending majority of our time under VWAP, spending very little time above VWAP. You have to dig deeper in your analysis and being able to, you know, use these, you know, a lot of times you guys just have indicators on your chart, right, this or that, and, and they're just on there, right? Dig a little deeper. Look at what the chart is trying to tell you, especially for a trending kind of day, right? If I pull back MU from today compared to the Qs, right? Okay, right here. It gave you so many opportunities just off the five minute. Were my EMAs respecting here off the open for uh, the five minute, nine and 20 EMAs? Just like yesterday, they did nothing for me. I'm just holding VWAP or not even holding VWAP. VWAP's just slicing through the middle, nine and 20 EMAs slicing through the middle. Look at VWAP here, right off the open. How much time is spent above and below VWAP? You must always ask yourself that. Here's some time spent below VWAP, a little bit of time spent below VWAP, and then you don't see it at the rest of the day, right? What's my 9 and 20 EMA doing? 20 is below the 9, right? Meaning that the 20 is acting as support for the bullish perspective, right? The chart's always going to tell you. They're always going to tell you what the chart is exactly wanting to do, right? Where the buyers and sellers are moving. Okay, this chart here, you had to use supply and demand to get the proper bullish thesis. This chart here, all you needed was 9 and 20 EMA and VWAP. So, going through here, I will also be uh, right here. What else am I going through? Okay, um, someone was asking about my A plus setups, right? Um, and I've already gone over one, you know, anything that I where I can gather a thesis with multiple trade confirmations, right? Using multiple levels of, you know, confluence, whether it be indicators, su uh, supply and demand, support and resistance, anything like that, right? So uh, the MU trade, right? I didn't I was not able to enact on this mid candle, but I did scalp it later on in the day. But I had a mid candle trade. I think it was where did it go? It was it off the one minute? I cleared this chart out. But I wanted to show I, I was demonstrating I was trading Tesla and the Qs while this trade panned out, but oh here it is. I think this is it. Yep, right here. 
right? Mid candle eaten up right there. EMA is not doing anything for you on the one, right? Maybe on the five, yes, but perfect mid candle. This was literally the bottom for the rest of the day, right? But I didn't take it right there due to the fact that I was trading uh, Tesla and uh, QQQ, but we scalped it later on in the day on the one. Um, Mr. Bay said, you never focus on specific time frame to judge if EMAs are respected, right? Just constantly scanning time frames for EMAs respect and going with that as a point of confluence or confirmation. So, right, I always look for the best respected time frame on EMAs. So if I can see here, if I clear this out, right, one minute EMAs, they fail you here, right? Bump it up to the three. Okay, three minute, not so bad. Remember, smaller time frame, the more aggressive of an entry. Okay, if you're trading on the one minute all of the time, then you are, uh, you know, trading an aggressive kind of mindset, whereas maybe the chart is not wanting to be aggressive. Maybe those buyers or sellers are not following through as aggressively as you are. So like we said, on the one minute, right? Maybe this trader gets stopped at a three, maybe not because it does wake below, but the three minute very, very clean today and all of your entries, right? If I look at this, entry, 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 here, 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 right? All day. Kind of stops you out at the end. But if you look on the five minute, right? Less aggressive, but less risk, right? It's giving you time to pull back to these EMAs. Um, VWAP is just, it, it's the same throughout all time frames. VWAP is not going to change. Uh, I know Weeble has like, it uses VWAP 14. I don't know why, but I don't think there's a way to change that. So, um, my A plus setups. I want you to, uh, wherever you are right now in your trading journey or on your path, right? I really need you guys to truly understand that, um, you know, you your a plus setups or whatever you're trading is not going to be relative or or correlate with someone else's a plus setups right you have to be able to it's like collecting uh, if i look at it this way in, in a in an honest sense it's like collecting over the years i have collected these setups where i keep them very close they're very fresh in my mind and i'm always searching for them on the chart as the chart is developing okay so you know, some traders like to trade inverse head and shoulders. Some traders uh, strictly like to trade downtrend breaks or support uptrend breaks, you know, supply and demand, whatever it else it may be, whatever you can wrap your mind around best and, you know, uh, use to your advantage on a daily basis, that is your A plus setup. So, uh, Max, he's Max Bull Bear Pain. I don't know if he has a Twitter or not. Uh, very great trader. So going through, right, my A plus setups, um, like I said, 9 and 20 EMAs, this is easy street. If it's trending only, remember, if you're ranging, no use. What are you going to use if you're ranging, right? Supply, right? Zoom out a little bit. Demand, right? Supply and demand, okay. Remember, you cannot use your 9 and 20 EMAs all the time. That's why I'm not solely a 9 and 20 EMA trader, right? I have all of these other kind of tips and tricks in my toolbook. So um, going through, I also use supply and demand, of course. I love inverse and uh, I love inverse head and shoulders and just regular head and shoulders. I didn't enact on this. I was, you know, trading some other things, but a great call out from members in the group today calling out this inverse head and shoulders, right? And you have your left shoulder, your neckline, and your uh, right shoulder here, right? You can kind of draw a either a support, right? Or you can beef it up, draw like a demand zone on the neckline. Why does this work? Why does uh, a, a head and shoulders work, right? Head and shoulders works because it works like this. You have your lower low pivot, right? You should always be marking pivots. You mark the next pivot. Tweezer bottoms, lots of buying here. It's a bit different from the last couple of pullbacks, right? Then it pulls back and you get your first higher low. Okay. That is called a higher low confirmation, right? Now, why does a regular head and shoulders work? Okay. Let me see if I can find one here. Um, hold on. Let me go like, let's tighten this a little bit. 
Where's one? Okay, like this is... Whoops. Damn, dude, this chart. Whoa. Okay, so right here. Why does it in? Why does a regular head and shoulders work? So, you know, you have this support or not support. This resistance level here, right? You can beef it up, draw a supply zone, right? You have your neckline, your head, and your neckline once again, right? This is your higher high. Your, look, higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high. Then you get a series of lower highs. When it pulls back, this is your lower high confirmation. Okay. This is where shorts get washed out, those novice shorts that didn't wait for a pullback, but this is your lower high confirmation. The same thing, like I talked about on the cues, the higher low confirmation, okay? Remember, for your pivots, in a bearish trend, you see lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, obviously. In your bullish trend, right? And when I'm talking about pivot points, okay, you mark your support along the way. You mark your resistance along the way. Support, right, and another resistance. These upper levels are not being breached, but the bottom levels are being breached, okay? If you're in a short, you scale out on those support or pivot point break uh, breaches, right? Now, when we're in an uptrend, you get your higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, right? Look at your pivots, very simply, right? Higher low, higher low, okay? But on the top side, this side here, right? You have your higher high, that point's broken. Higher high, that point's broken, right? Once you get something like this, right? When it pops up, and then it fails. And it, remember, this hasn't come down yet, right? But it fails. It doesn't create a higher high any longer. That's where you begin to see weakness within your trend, right? You get the first lower high. Okay, you get the first lower high, right? Now, two things are going to happen. You're either going to get a higher low where it bounces, right? Or you'll get your first lower low, right? where the support breaks. Now, when you get your lower low, okay, this is normally the beginning of your bearish trend, okay? Normally the, the beginning of your bearish trend. You'll see another lower high pop up most likely, and then it dump, okay? Now, for an example like that, let me see if I can find one. Maybe uh, on the cues from yesterday. Okay, no, this is perfect, right here. So, right here, right? Higher low, higher low, higher low. But you get a little lower low break there. Higher high, higher high, higher high, right? Then you get the first lower high. Remember, I just showed you that. First lower high. Okay, remember you have this support right here. Let me remove this. Support right there. That's your most recent higher low. Higher low, higher low. Most recent higher low where it pulls back. You get your first lower low. What happens after? It dumps all the way to pre-market low demand. Okay, simply due to the fact that you were marking and paying attention to the pivots. Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher high, lower high, lower low, short. You take a short. Okay, very, very simple. So I love pivot points, higher low, lower high confirmation through an inverse head and shoulders or regular head and shoulders. Um, I don't know if this is an A plus setup, but not finding the trend. How many of you guys lost money today simply due to the fact that you were trying to time the reversal? Okay, my general rule of thumb, okay, PJ said this perfectly, right? It's bullish until it's not, or it's bearish until it's not, okay? Also, if you're an EMA trader, you know that sellers or buyers, depending on what direction you're trading, have their stop loss normally on the 5 or 10 minute 20 EMA. For me to go short 
I need to see a clear stopping out, clear selling signal, but on the 20 EMA. So when I see that, right, I'll go back to that example from here. Oh, it's bullish. Buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. First 20 EMA fail on the five minute and it closes below it and it's a bearish engulfing, right? We already went over the lower highs and lower lows in this, right? This is where you go short, okay? You short the pops, you short the pops, you short the pops, right? You don't want to short the down ticks way down here, right? A lot of people are trying to FOMO short. They think it's just going to go down, right? There's breathing points. You have to, shorts have to cover, right? They have to buy, push this up. They will reshort, short it down, reshort, right? Lower high, so no reason to stop out. Bigger dump. So, um, also, I really enjoy um, downtrend breaks. Now, I'm not a huge fan of them, but like I showed you guys on the hourly, right? That trade that I took right here in this supply, I took it right here, right? If you look on the one minute, it was aggressive. Remember, I was looking at the one minute. You're looking at the one minute. It broke above, but it came back, right? It broke and based on this downtrend line, okay? And that was the kind of confluence for me to take the trade on a scalp, right? Later entries dictate quicker profit taking as well as riskier entries should be very quick exits, right? You don't, it's all about time exposure. So, um, I will begin the, um, the giveaway now, right? Since you guys have all tuned in with me and hopefully you guys were able to learn, right? Uh, if this helped you guys out, I hope that, uh, you guys were able to, you know, benefit from this, but, um, keyword, it will be uh, green, right? I need you to type in green. Let's see how this works. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, not yet. Okay, there we go. Maybe it should work now. I don't know, why is it not working? Oh, okay, there we go. Yep, so type in the word green, just regular green, don't caps or anything. I don't know if it's... I know it's case insensitive, so. Also, while you guys are getting your entries in, if you wanted to check out, okay, not you guys in the Discord. You guys are, you guys are, what do y'all do? All right, if you guys also, uh, while you guys are getting in your entries, okay, if you guys wanted to check out what the Discord is like, right, this is the trading floor. I make all of my callouts here while I uh, stream. It's kind of crazy because every single moment that I am trading or well, every time I'm at my desk, I'm always recording, right? So if you, if I'm at the desk, if I'm trading, you, you, I'm going to be on stream. So I'm always making call outs. I daily stream four to uh, six hours every single day. All of my trades, you're going to see a chart. You're going to see a trade thesis. You're going to see a trade walkthrough. You're going to understand why and where I stop out and you know why and where I scale out, right? I hold on to my winners. So, uh, the Discord, I will put the link in the chat. Hold on, entries are still coming in. Okay, so um, I stream every morning in the Discord, right? I also do a daily, or not daily, but I do a nightly live set, not even nightly, uh, three to four times a week, so almost nightly, but, um, I stream just like a session like we had tonight. We have them three to four times a week. Like I said, they all last about an hour long, right? Uh, these are all videos going over the, ne uh, the necessary strategies and skill sets that will push you to be a profitable and independent trader, right? Options basics, uh, technical analysis review, how to simplify your trading, tape reading, TOS workshop, uh, think tank groups, uh, how to execute options, trades on thinkorswim, how to control emotions, my pre-market channel strategy, my favorite setups and how to trade them, right? These are my A plus setups right here. Um, you know, how to review a failed trade, supply and demand, important main option strategy, so many videos, 9 and 20 EMA strategy breakdown. I have over, uh, also my pre-market channel strat, right? How to buy high, sell higher, f trading alongside a trend. I have over 100 videos here, right? Since the inception of the Discord group, going over all of the lessons. 
Um, also in the group, right, we have chart review. This is a very active and very dedicated and supportive group, right? Uh, we have options, inside bar plays, earnings plays, right? We go through profits and percents. Um, nice work, $100 there from someone, 100% from Lil B, 55% from D Lee. Denali made $133 off the Tesla trade. Soggy, 0.43% on his account. Uh, Denali came in, made $194 that day or today. Mr. Harris made $600 bucks today. Gonzo made 17% on their account. KDR made $387 today on their account, or, yeah, $387. Um, this dude double hit his account today. Look at that, 50%. 87% from D. Lee, and $475, or $475 from Dark Mike. Tons of good moves here, guys. Great work. Look, $819 there from Tesla on from J. Huge. Nice work, 7%. This is their previous day. Good work, though, right? Love seeing you guys. Look, Edwina made $154 yesterday and $462 today. Um, also, we have a ton of EDU content right here. Uh, books, supply and demand, strategies, tons of courses, right? All of the live sessions, homework. I Every weekend, I'm very interactive with the group. I put out homework assignments for you guys to better yourselves and really test yourself as a trader, not just from a technical aspect, but also uh, in all kind of regards in life so um in the giveaway all right so let's roll this out also if you are looking to join the group if you don't win or whatever you just want to join anyway uh you can join by checking out the discord link that i'm posting in the chat now uh i don't know why there's a big hot dog i, I really can't explain that yeah here i just put the link in the chat okay um so let's roll it. I don't know if I can pick two. Okay, I, I it's just gonna let me pick one, I think. Okay, roll it. Let's see. Fed Gov, right? Look at that. Look at that fine young gentleman, Kodak Black. Uh Fed Gov, right? Please uh DM me your or just DM me on uh on Twitch. Right here on Twitch would be best, just so I can make sure it's you. <clears throat> okay, FedGov here. Is he in here? And is he in the group? Alright. So DM me uh, here on Twitch, right? We'll, we'll roll it again. Okay, so FedGov, right? Fine young gentleman. Alright. Uh, WG Hubble. WG Hubble is another one. Okay, let's see. WG Hubble here. All right. All right, fuck it. Let's do two more. Let's do two more. You guys want to do two more? Okay, look, yeah, you guys are putting green. All right, let's do it. All right, who is Lando? Oh, I got to write these down. We got Kodak FedGov. We got WG Hubble. And who is Lando? Remember, you have to DM me on either Twitter or Twitch. Okay, we'll do one more. One more, one more, one more. Okay. Always tilting. This guy needs it. This guy needs it bad. Okay. Always tilting 24-7. We're gonna we're gonna help we're gonna help you out, man. <laughs> we're gonna help you. If you're tilting, um, you can, I, I think you can just right click my name and, uh, <laughs> uh, and always tilt in 24 7. All right. So, okay. Congratulations, you guys. You know, glad that you guys were able to, uh, you know, participate in the live session tonight and, uh, you know, win a one month membership in the House of Stacks. Right. So, um, I will be streaming on Twitch, of course, the remainder of the week, right? I'll be streaming on Twitch um, tomorrow and Friday. I only stream on Twitch the first of the month. And uh, yeah, Deb's in there. And uh, I stream also um, every now and then throughout the month just on Twitch, right? But I stream every single day within the Discord. 
Um, but I hope that this benefited you guys. I hope that you guys were able to, you know, truly learn from this experience and take notes, right? I will um, upload this, of course, to the Google Drive and it'll be on Twitch for like, uh, I think it stays on Twitch for like 60 days or something like that. So, all right, perfect. Yeah, if you message me on Twitch, uh, I'll get those invites sent out. So, once again, thank you guys all for giving me your time this evening. I will be live day trading tomorrow starting at 8.30. I will go over pre-market prep just like I do every single morning. All right, I post all the plans. You know, we chart a QQQ, SPY plans, AMD plans, NVIDIA, right? Look at AMD. You guys saw that AMD, plan, that AMD setup. Okay, you guys saw what it panned out to be, but who enacted upon it? Okay, were you watching it? Look, same plan from this morning. Right here, AMD. Same plan from this morning. This demand was perfect. This demand was also really good. Banked. Okay, if you took it. Uh, yes, I stay live while the market is open as well. I stay live until about 1 o'clock. Who the leader? Oh, what did Rizm say? Um, I stay live trading until about 1 o'clock. Also, if you are in the Discord, uh, you get all the call outs as well, right? Tesla, look, 140 contract there. The 343 calls, 70 a contract there. I mean, the, the membership pays itself if you can be patient, right? Look at Beautiful. Look, 393 call or 343 calls right there, 90 a contract, right? Very, very simple kind of uh, trades that we take, and it's always based off of risk management. So please uh, make sure you have notifications on or something for Twitch so that you do, uh, you do not miss out on the live stream tomorrow and or Friday if you're able to trade. Watch my process. I will detail why I'm taking a trade. I want you, it's not about call outs, even though the call outs are good, right? I really want you guys as traders to truly understand a thesis of a successful and profitable trader, right? Why am I taking the trade? Where is his stop loss? Where are his targets? What is keeping him in this trade? Why is he able to hold for so long? Okay. You will learn all of that just through watching one live session or one live trading session. So, yes, 8.30 tomorrow morning, one hour before market open. Okay, one hour before market open. It only takes me about 30 minutes to do the pre-market prep, charting all the contracts. And then uh, I go over and I try to prepare everyone mentally, reading the small account affirmations, talking about some things that you should be caution or, you know, cautionary uh, of or cautious of. And, um, you know, looking at what may or may not happen throughout the market, right? Always practicing proper risk rewards. So, um, I will get to those DMs tonight. I will send out those invites. Um, we'll probably have maybe one, maybe two more EDU sessions. And, uh, you know, I hope that these are helping you guys out. So once again, I really appreciate everyone giving me their time this evening. You guys get some rest. Have a good evening. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 8.30. Also, if you want to check out the Discord, right? Discord link is posted in the chat now. Yeah, thank you, Deb. Thank you, Rizm. Thank you, Bad Buddha. Thank you, Q. Thank you, everyone who uh, was able to, you know, spend some time going over some charts and uh, listen to me blab for the last hour.